Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back for another Saturday Crafternoon. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. I usually say that I'm tuning in from sunny South Florida, but right now there's a huge downpour going on out there. Kind of like a real big storm. So if you hear a lot of uh, crackling out there, there's a lot of thunder going on. So I'm hoping that everyone can see me and hear me okay. If you can, please let me know in the chat. It is a little stormy outside. So I'm hoping all our technology holds up and we won't have any issues over this hour. So thank you all for tuning in. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Nancy with Gifts HQ and I host these weekly live sessions to talk about all things crafting. And we talk about things like knitting, crocheting, decoupage, embroidery, and so much more. There's just so many crafts that are out there and I like to kind of um, dabble on a little bit of everything and talk about what I've seen, what I've researched, um, tips and tricks, and share ideas. Because I'm sure a lot of you out there have some an Etsy shop or maybe you have a little craft show coming up soon and you're thinking of selling some things and need some ideas. So this is just a great place to kind of tune in, uh, meet some friends, jump on into the chat, say hello to some fellow gifted crafters and just have a little fun. So I hope you really enjoy this session. And today we've got a lot of things going on, but first let's say hello to a few friends that I see out there. Woo, we can hear that little thunder going on. <laughs> okay, so I want to say hi to Miss Max. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. I have crafting with Robin. I have embroiderer G's. First time for you. So glad you joined. Thank you for coming. I see Jackie Hallman, Judy Bauer, Norma, Lasro. I see one minute tips and I see Robin's quilt basket. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in and I really hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, we've got some holidays because this girl loves her holidays. So I'm always searching to see what kind of holidays are out there. So just for your little knowledge, today is Give Something Away Day, which we would love to do today. So we did have our 2Q23 Trivia Master that we um, announced and the winner was Amy B. And we've sent a few emails out and I'm hoping that she contacts us soon. Um, she did contact us, but we need to know exactly which prize she wants to have. We've given her a choice of three different books. So I'm just waiting for her to contact us back to let us know which one she would like and then we can ship everything out. So Amy, if you're watching, please um, check your email box. We sent you a few emails and I hope you can um, pick out your book so that we can get everything over to you. Uh, it's also I Love Horses Day and it is World Youth Skills Day, which is awesome because I, there's a lot of kids out there, a lot of youths out there that really would like to enhance some of their skills and this is a great place to do that. So we share a lot of the tips and tricks as I said before and this is just a place to kind of get your feet wet, get started and you know kind of learn different skills and find out what's going out there in the crafting world and then once you can select what you really um, like and what speaks to you, you can go ahead and do additional research and start to work on that craft. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Alrighty. Let's see. So um, we are also starting our 3Q or third quarter 2023 trivia. Um, we started that, uh, was it last week or the week before? I'm sorry, the beginning of July. And so if you're tuning in for the first time and you noticed you have these trivia questions and people are jumping into the chat, go ahead and jump in and try to answer the questions. And what we'll do is we kind of tally up the points every week and we post it out on the community chat so you can see kind of where you fall in terms of knowing your trivia. And at the end of the quarter, we like to give a little gift to our top trivia master. Now at the end of the year, we'll be pulling our grand trivia champion um, and we've got something special lined up for that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that's what those trivia questions are all about. So I hope you like that. Uh, let's see. We've also got um, some stuff that we talked about last week. And 
If you tuned in last week, or if you haven't checked that one out, that was live number 48. Um, today's live number 49. So can you believe it? We're going to hit 50 already. Um, it's kind of shocking to me <laughs> since I feel like we literally just started doing lives, but it, it just feels like it was yesterday. So anyway, um, last week we talked about transferring photos onto wood and we talked about all the different things that you would have to do, the different methods. And I did share with you guys my finished product on the Facebook group. So if you haven't tuned into our Facebook group, um, it is Gifts HQ USA. And you can see here, this is the finished um, project here. I hope you guys can see that pretty well. So after we photo transferred the picture onto this wood, you can see the back of the wood here. It's pretty thick. You know, so now I have this kind of keepsake that I can put into my kind of hallway. I kind of wanted to put a nice little picture that was made out of wood. And we transferred this over with wood and we used Mod Podge. Um, kind of went through the steps last week. So if you didn't get a chance to catch that, go ahead and check that video out. Um, but I was really happy with the results. And there's all kinds of different sizes and things that you can do. We talked about all kinds of ideas. So really, really nice way to kind of preserve your memories and keep them on to wood. It's kind of a unique way of doing it rather than just putting pictures on a little frame and just kind of hanging it. So this this is, an I think, a great idea. Makes awesome gifts. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I really love the way it turned out. Um, it, it took some work you know, but it, I think it, it's, it's really nice. I love it. So what are we going to talk about this week? Well, I kind of wanted to keep the same theme going in terms of transferring images, messages, um, all kinds of your personalized items to other products. So I thought it would be nice to kind of take a look at instead of transferring images to wood, to maybe now look at transfer images to fabric. So transferring it directly onto the fabric. And for those of you who may have never tried that, it's actually a lot easier than you think. And it's it takes a little bit of um, prep time. Um, it's actually really easy and there's just so many things you can make with that. So I wanna kind of share some of that with you. Um, let me just see if I missed anything here. And it looks like I covered everything that I wanted. Um, so let's jump into what supplies you're going to need in order to get this done. Now, there's different methods that you can use to transfer your photos or images onto fabric. But one of the more popular methods is using something that you may already have in your home. And that is, of course, freezer paper. Now there's different brands and different things that are out there. I particularly like the Reynolds kitchen freezer paper. I think this was, you know, it's a pretty good buy. You get a pretty big box. This is about hundred square feet on here. And you can do tons and tons and tons of projects with this one roll. You don't use like tons of it, you know, so it's, it's pretty economical. And this is really the main other than your fabric and a printer, these are like the main things that you need in order to get it started. So it really doesn't take too much. But let me talk about a couple other things that I used as well. Now, you're going to need your freezer paper, you're going to need an iron, you will need a printer, and we'll get into a little bit more about the printer and ink, because there's a lot of confusion out there in terms of, can you use a laser printer, can you use an ink check printer? or you know, the types of inks that'll work on it and not. And, and I was a little confused on it, but I think I got it down pack and I did a little experimenting and I'm gonna show you what we tried to do here. Um, the other thing that I use, and you may already have this, is just a piece of Teflon. And this is just what I use in order to kind of 
put on top of my image once it's completed just to kind of heat set it. I don't want to have my iron hitting it directly. So I did use this to kind of keep that um, in place. Now, this piece of Teflon, I got it from Timu. Super, super cheap. You know, you can kind of get them in all different places. The craft stores, I'm sure, have them as well. Um, so there's all kinds of places you can get it, including Amazon and things. But Timo, very, very cheap. All I needed was um, a little strip came to. And, you know, I have multiple uses for this. So if you are a sewer, a quilter, you probably already have this sitting in your craft room. <laughs> now, some of the other items that I did get... For this particular project, I used Waverly Inspiration. It's 100% cotton, and I just got this from my local Walmart. And this has two yards to it, and I'll give you a close-up of that. And it's a very simple um, kind of beige type of fabric. Um, nothing really different about this. It is 100% cotton, which is what I wanted. They did have different colors, but since I am transferring a photo over to the fabric, I wanted to kind of pick something that was light so that it would come through. Um, so there's different things that you can do with the fabric as well. If you wanted to kind of embroider around the image that you're transferring and there's other things that you can do. But we'll talk about more about the embellishments that you can make onto your projects as well. But Kind of think out of the box when you are thinking of a project like this you know think about what you would like your outcome to look like you know so if you had kind of have that set in your mind on what it, you want it to look like you know you can kind of shift it around to get it to that point once you are already transferred the image on and you can kind of play with the embellishments that way okay so um let's talk a little bit about um the freezer paper itself because it's not just transferring an image with the freezer paper onto fabric okay freezer paper actually has a few different things that you can use for it now and you can yes you can transfer the image over with it but you can also do other things with freezer paper and i want to kind of touch upon a couple of those things as well um you can do things such as applique um, you can do needle turn applique, I <laughs> can't say that word today, or you can do raw edge. You know, there's two different applique methods that you can use with this freezer paper. You can also use freezer paper to stabilize your labels. If you're a quilter and you like to write on your fabric with your name and the information of the quilt that you just made, Sometimes you'll notice that the pen and when you're trying to write on fabric tends to kind of move around and it doesn't really let you write on fabric, at least not in a clean way. Well, I found that if you stick a piece of freezer paper behind the fabric, then write on it, you'll notice that the freezer paper will kind of anchor it down and hold it in place for you to be able to write things and create your label. So I think that's another great um, way you could use freezer paper that'll help you with your crafting. Um, another way that, and this was kind of an odd thing that I learned about, you can clean your wool mat with freezer paper. So for those of you who have a wool mat, um, and they, they're pretty popular um, this past year or so, right? A lot of people have purchased these wool mats for their ironing. You can take a piece of freezer paper and lay it down on top of your wool mat and then just hit it with an iron. And when you take that freezer paper off, you're going to be so surprised as to how many things the freezer paper picks up off your wool mat. So it really kind of helps you clean it. So, you know, freezer paper really has a lot of different functions and things you can do with it. It's not just about transferring the image. So, you know, at first I kind of thought, well, 100 square feet, it's a pretty big box. And I really couldn't even find any smaller ones. But once I've seen all the different things that you can do with freezer paper, I thought, you know, it's it's not bad to have this um, size of a roll because there's just so many different uses. So don't think of freezer paper as just um, the ability to transfer images because there are tons of things that you can do with freezer paper. So, 
you know, again, like, let's kind of summarize it up. You know, you, you can do the labels for your quilting, you can clean your wool mat, and you can transfer images, or you can do applique, whether it be the raw applique, or you can do the turned applique where you don't see the raw edges. So, you know, there's, there's many, many more uses that I'm sure they're out there. So, you know, not too bad. It's, it's a good buy and I think it's a good thing to have in your craft room. Okay. I see, I see a couple of people in the chat. Uh, a lot of people are saying that they love the picture. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. And, and you know, it was pretty simple to make. So if, you know, if you have a photo that you would like to preserve and put onto wood, I think that's, you know, an excellent way of doing it. It's, it, it's really not too complicated and it's something that you can do even with grandkids. You know, you can get them into involved into the project and have them do the project with you. I think it's a lot of fun and they'll would really enjoy it. Okay. So, um, I do see a question here. So Jackie is asking, do you put the smooth shiny side down? So I'm assuming you're talking about when you're cleaning the wool mat. Yes. What you do. Um, and I'll, kind of take out actually I think I did have let's see here thought I had a piece of freezer paper and oh this is something I can show you <laughs> so I talked about cleaning the wool mat and and Jackie thanks for bringing up that question so yes um these are two little strips that I I forgot I would save it because I wanted to show you guys when I was cleaning my wool mat. And so this is just two little strips that I had cut out. They were kind of left over from the project. And so you'll notice that freezer paper has two sides. It has a matte side and then there's a shiny side. And this one is kind of hard to see. So let me just grab a little piece for you. See if I can get it out. I'll just take another little piece just don't mind the noise here. Okay. So here's just a piece that I pulled out. And you'll notice this side of the freezer paper has a little bit of a shine to it. Let me just give you a close-up to that. You can see it. Now you can see, I'm hoping you can see that a little bit. So it's got a little bit of that shine to it okay now let me show you the other side which is the matte side you'll see it's much more plain like when you have it in your hand it's probably a lot easier to see on the camera i'm not sure if you guys can see it too well but this is the matte side of the freezer paper and then here is the shiny side of the freezer paper that has that wax now, freezer paper, way back in the days when maybe your parents and stuff would go and get meat, this is what they would wrap the meat in, right? So it's got that little waxy feel on the one side, and then you have the matte paper side on the other. You can actually feel the difference with your hands as well. And what when I was cleaning the mat, what I did was I took this waxy or shiny side, and I did face it down on top of the mat. And then I just hit it with my dry iron and I ironed it. And then I just let it sit for a minute to cool down. And then I just kind of picked it up. And when I picked it up, you can see here, because I kind of saved this so I could show you, you can see it did pick up a number of things. So it did clean my wool mat. So you can see here, all the things that it picked up. And this is what I think after like my second time around. So, you know, the wool mat, if you want a really quick and easy clean, it does pick up all the particles and the things. It looks like I had a little bit of glitter on there, probably from, you know, some glitter bomb in my <laughs> craft room, but it did get on to the wool mat and this was able to pick that stuff up. So I was pretty happy with the results of that because I was able to kind of clean that up. 
Now, there are other tools that are out there that you can use to clean your wool mat. Matter of fact, I did purchase one and let me grab that one for you. I did purchase this and I've seen them out there in Amazon um, and they were a lot more expensive. I ended up buying this from Timu for a couple of dollars and all this does is just kind of go through the mat. You kind of run it through the wool mat and it does pick up a lot of the particles as well. So nice tool to have. I use it every once in a while. Um, and it's something simple that you can get from Timo. But, you know, the freezer paper, if you don't have this, the freezer paper does a pretty good job as well. So, good tools to have for you to be able to clean your wool mat. I think that's a great method um, and another purpose that if you have freezer paper, you can give that a try. I think you'll be pretty surprised on the result. Okay, let me see if I see any more questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, Annette says, my grandmother used to use freezer paper for everything. That's how long it's been around. Yes, it has. It has, Annette. And, you know, it can, people continue to find new uses for freezer paper. I mean, if you do paper piecing as well, freezer paper is another method, you know, that you can use for paper piecing. And I did a video on paper piecing and we talked about that as well. So it continues to have, they have all kinds of methods for freezer paper, you know, it's just, it's a great, great product that you can use and it helps out a lot, you know, for quilting, if you wanna do applique, you know, it's another great, great way of doing it. So, you know, if you're doing um, applique and you have a template, let's say of a leaf, you know, and you, you have the leaf kind of drawn out, you can use the freezer paper to kind of put it on top so that you can draw it out and then cut around it and then you, you leave that quarter inch seam allowance you can tuck the edges inside and then hit it with the dry iron and there you have your template for you to cut out your fabric and then use it for the applique so so many different methods and things that you can do with freezer paper so it's definitely a plus to have in the craft room okay <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second. Yep. So Robin says that she uses it for quilting. <laughs> and it seems like a, lot, a few other people do as well, which is great because it definitely has a lot of uses. So let's take a look at what I did when I was transferring the image over. And let me just show you a couple of things. Let's see here. Well, here are the pieces that I use. And if I can get this out here, here we go. So what I did over the first step of pulling all of this together is to take your freezer paper and you're going to need to eventually cut it down to about an eight and a half by 11 size. And the reason for that is because that's what's going to fit into your printer. So you may want to do a little bit longer. If your printer, you know, takes longer paper, you can do it in half by 14, things like that. That's great. I just use the standard eight and a half by 11. And what I did was I cut out the freezer paper and then I took my fabric and I cut my fabric out and what I did was I took the freezer paper laid it down then I took my fabric and laid it on top of that and then I hit it with a dry iron no steam just a dry iron and you want it on a high setting but you don't want to burn the fabric either so be careful with that. Keep the iron moving. You don't want to have it sitting in one place because you could, you know, just potentially burn it. Um, so after you've done that, you want to go ahead and cut it out to size. So you'll go ahead and get your rotary cutter. If you're good with a pair of scissors, you can do it that way as well. And then once you cut it down to size, you're going to end up with this. 
where you will have the fabric sitting on top and then if you flip it over you're going to have the paper side of the freezer paper showing so the waxy side is in between is behind the fabric itself and that's what's what holding this together so what you've in essentially created is your own transfer sheet because you now have the wax paper on the bottom so that the printer can pick up the paper and you have the fabric on top where the image will actually be placed so when you're putting the paper into your your um, laser printer you also may want to just make sure that you know which side the printer will be printing on because you do not want your your image to come out on the paper side you want your image to come out onto the fabric so you could do a little test like i did i just take a piece of paper put it in the tray i mark it with an x and then i print something simple and I look to see where did the image come out on the machine when it finished. And that's what will tell me whether I have to do it uh, with the fabric facing up or facing down. So every printer is a little bit different. So just do that little test and you'll be good to go. Once you have that in place and you'll know how to position your paper, then you run it through your printer. Now, what I did was we printed a paper copy first. And let me get the paper copy so you can see that. Okay, so this is the paper that I printed it on. And this is the image that I'm using. It's a picture of my mom from a very long time ago when she was young. And I thought that would be a neat thing to do. Um, it is a black and white picture. And I'm going to show you this a little closer here. So I took the picture and we created a little frame and then just added a little embellishment with the word mom. And so I printed this just on regular paper. And then once you have it on regular paper, you know what it's going to look like. But you also want to kind of play around with the the colors like the tone you want to try to print it out in the lightest color possible because when you go to print it out it, if if you look at the photo itself and you look at the printout that you have you're gonna notice that when you look at the printout that came out it's gonna be a lot darker than the actual image that you're seeing on your computer so once you have the image and you you're ready to print it out you want to make sure you try to brighten it as much as you can um, without distorting the image of course just i would suggest to put it on the brightest that you can and then go ahead and print it and when you print it out on your piece of paper you're more or less going to see what it's going to look like when you actually print it onto the fabric so this is on the piece of paper itself and i was pretty happy with the results of this and so i went ahead and once we printed it out on paper i went ahead and printed it out onto the fabric and let me just show you the results of that one Let's see here we go now i'm going to show you two things let me show you the result first this is what it looks like and I'm not sure if you can even tell on the camera which one is actually the fabric and which one is actually the paper. That's how close they are in terms of what the outcome looks like. So this is the fabric and you'll see the freezer paper behind it. This is what it looks like. And so I thought, you know, this could be a great project. I was thinking kind of like doing almost like a, either I could do a little pillow with her on it and then maybe do one of my dad. I thought that would be really cute. Or you can kind of, if you want to lay it out on, let's say a longer piece and maybe do like a little quilt or a lap blanket, you can do these like as an applique as well. So there's so many different things that you can do depending on your image and you don't have to put this border on it like the picture is just this and i decided to put the border as well as the the name mom on here 
but you don't have to do that. There's so many different things that you can do and then you can kind of place it all over the place. And if you wanted to make it as a quilt, you can. So it's just different things, you know, different ideas on, depending on how you want to lay it out on what you can do. But you can clearly see that the printout that was done on the paper itself is pretty similar to how it actually turned out onto the fabric. And this was done with a laser printer. Now, I want to remember I mentioned earlier that when you are ironing your freezer paper onto the fabric, you want to make sure that you don't leave the iron in any one spot for too long, right? Because you could potentially burn it. Guess how I know that? <laughs> so you may end up with something like this that happened to me. Now, I left the iron got a little distracted, left the iron in this particular spot for a little bit longer than I wanted um, without moving it. I kind of left it there for a minute. And you'll see here that it has this kind of yellowish tone to it. And you can see that on here, how it did come out. And I'll see if you can see it a little better here. See how that kind of looks a little burned there? Now, some people may like that. If you want that kind of antique-ish look, you know how some people kind of use tea or coffee to stain their papers and make them look old, you know, you may want that kind of effect. So if that's something that you're looking for, then you can definitely do that with your iron to kind of tone down the fabric itself and make it look antique-ish. But that is what happened to me. And, you know, it did look, had that little burned look like I, I didn't particularly care for it too much. I thought about going around and doing the rest of the paper that way, but I kind of found that the picture itself, it kind of made it look duller. So I wasn't too crazy about how that came out. So I went back and I did another one and you can clearly see the difference here. How you see this part is a little darker than how the image actually occurred when I did it correctly and kept moving the iron. So, I thought this was pretty cool to do. Um, once you're done and you have your image onto the paper, it's really just a matter of taking your fabric and the freezer paper and just basically separating it. Let me see if I can grab it on here. There we go. So you can see here, you just separate the freezer paper, comes right off and you have your fabric. And so your fabric, you know, now you can go ahead and you can use this to attach it to whatever project you're doing. If you're going to now just take it out all the way. Give me a second. Okay. So here's that freezer paper, which by the way, you can reuse this. You can reuse your freezer paper. You can just hit it with the iron again and it will adhere to another piece of fabric. So don't feel like you have to cut out like 20 different pieces of paper over, you know, just to be able to do different ones. These can be reused. And for those of you who do paper piecing, know this, um, that's the great thing about freezer paper that you can reuse them over and over again. So definitely pull it to the side. You can get a couple of uses on there before it stops adhering very well. So this is the actual fabric as you can see it's not sticky on the back side and you know now this is ready to go like i can literally take this if i want to do a backing to it sew it to something or just add it to maybe a little quilt that i'd like to do you know there's so many uses that you can do with this now of course this is the one that has that little burn spot so not particularly crazy about that so i'm probably going to use this one here but um again it's it's really up to you if you want that antique-ish look or if you want to go ahead and put it straight onto the fabric like this so this is a really really simple technique you know just putting the freezer paper cutting it down fusing the freezer paper to the fabric with a dry iron and then just printing out your image with your laser printer now Let's talk about the different 
printers that are out there because they can be a little bit confusing. Um, and I have a little bit of information and I kind of wrote it down to remind myself here. Um, okay. So there's different printers out there that use different types of ink. And I can tell you that I use a laser printer. Now, why did I use a laser printer versus a inkjet printer? Is really because of the ink itself. So laser printers have a pigment-based ink. And what is a pigment-based ink? Well, pigment-based ink, at the end of the day, it's waterproof. It's a, it's, and the reason why it's waterproof is because it has pigment particles or powder that that's inside the ink. And that's what suspends the ink, if that makes sense, right? So think of it like it's, it's the powdery stuff that's inside that toner cartridge when you're doing that laser printer, that powder is waterproof and that's what helps to keep your designs onto the fabric and it allows you to go ahead and and transfer it over and the heat of the printer is what brings it in and then when you're done transferring your image onto your fabric i would then also kind of hit it with the dry iron using of course this here right because you never want to hit your iron directly onto the image itself so i would definitely take my teflon paper put it on top and then just hit it with the dry iron again and that would be your finished result but why is it that you can't use an ink jet ink jet printer so there are different um items out there that allow you to do the ink jet but I found that using the, the laser printer is the best result you're really going to get. Only because your inkjet printers, they don't use pigment ink. They use dye-based ink. And there is a difference, right? So dye-based ink is really good for printing like paper, um, if you're doing cards, things like that. But it is not waterproof. And... I'm going to show you what I did just to kind of prove that because I wanted to show you what would happen if you try to do it with an inkjet printer and you used these dye based ink. So this is another image that I have and let me just kind of move these over a little bit. So I did this image on paper. And this was on my inkjet printer. Um, this one is just the black and white um, uh, paper because I was trying to kind of save on the color. But it is a color um, photo and I ended up printing it in color on the actual um, fabric. So I did the same method in terms of the prep. So you've got your freezer paper, you've got your fabric, I hit it with the dry iron to fuse it together, cut it out to eight and a half by 11, and then fed it through my inkjet printer. And this was the result. So right off the bat, you think, well, you know, it looks great, you know? So you have your image here, and that's a picture of my mom and dad and my kids. And so, the image itself looks absolutely beautiful and I loved the way it came out, but I wanted to test it to see, well, will it actually hold up like this? Will it stay? Will the image continue to be here? I went after I printed it, I went back and I hit it with my dry iron again with the Teflon sheet on top and that seemed to be okay. So, so far I was so good, you know, like it, it turned out great. And I thought, well, this is great, you know, inkjet, you know, I have an inkjet printer, you know, so I was able to do this. I do have a laser printer, but I only have a black and white laser printer. Um, so I was only able to do this one in black and white, 
but with my inkjet, I can actually have color and I think that would make my quilt pop even more. But I thought about the type of project that I'm doing and it's a quilt, which is probably going to want to get washed at some point. And somebody could spill water on it, liquid on it. So I wondered, you know, would it be able to sustain that? And this is what happened. So I went ahead and I took a, um, just a little spray bottle and I spritzed the edge of the actual, um, the actual uh, fabric, sorry. <laughs> and when I did, I noticed that first off, I now have a watermark and let me see if I can get this closer so you guys could see it. You can see it did create a watermark. And you can also see that it, there's some distortion on the image itself. So once it got wet, and I'll see if I can put this up a little more, you'll see here that the arm here has some discoloration. And you'll notice that the ink was not holding up well once it got wet. So what does that tell you? You can't, means you can't throw it in the washing machine or your project will basically be ruined. It can't get wet in any, in any way because your image will get distorted and it will start to bleed. So if I run my hands a lot with this, I can see the ink coming out on my hands. So the inkjet or the dye based ink that the inkjet printers use are not really able to sustain the longevity that you would want in a project that could get wet or maybe needs to be washed. Now, let's say I just wanted to kind of print this on fabric and then maybe I was going to frame it and put it up on my wall. In that case, I would say that this would be a great method and it would work for what you're doing. But if you're looking for a type of project where it could possibly get wet or would need to get washed, the inkjet printer really would not work in terms of transferring your image over and keeping it onto the fabric for a long time. So that's something that you do need to look out for. It is um, a big difference between the, the printers. So the laser printer is waterproof, will stay even if you wet it will stay on and will not bleed. Inkjet printer has dye-based ink. It will not stay on if it gets wet. As you can see, it does get distorted and eventually the ink will run. So be a little careful when you are actually doing this project, making sure that you're using the right tools um, in order for you to get the result that you want on your specific project. So definitely, you know, something to look out for. Now, um, let me see if I had any more tips for you guys on this. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We, so we talked about the pigment ink. Um, you know, it's waterproof. It's used for fabric printing. And they're more water resistant than the dye-based ink. Now, if you have a printer that uses pigment ink and it's an inkjet but it uses pigment ink then you're good to go with the first method and note just note that it, your your ink will not run if it gets wet because you have to think of it as laser printers toners you know that they it uses pigment ink but when you talk about inkjet printers a lot of them use dye based ink and that will run and is not waterproof now what i have seen on the i have an hp um nv5660 and these are the inks that i need to buy in order for me to you know run my inkjet printer i did notice as i was doing more research on different inkjet printers Sometimes they'll tell you that the ink that they use, the black ink seems to be pigment ink. However, the color ink is not pigment. It is dye based. 
So in this case, I noticed that where the color were, was on the actual transfer seemed to run a lot. However, the black really didn't move so much. And I think it's because my printer uses pigment ink for black, but dye based for the colors. So when you're looking at getting a printer, and if, if you're looking at ink check printers and you're looking at, you know, doing this type of process, you always want to pay attention to the type of ink that it uses. And just know that if you're using, if it uses pigment ink, you're good to go and it is waterproof. But if it is dye ink, then that ink will run when the water hits it. So you kind of just kind of look at, you know, the project that you're doing and what you're going to need in, in order to get that done. So good thing is to kind of just ask about the ink. What ink does it use is, and figure out what kind of project you want to use and then you'll know which one you will need. Um, so I have the black and white laser printer. It's a pretty old printer, but I'm happy to say that I did get a color printer. <laughs> I did get a color printer on the Amazon Prime Day. It hasn't arrived yet, um, but I'm excited to get it and probably do a few more of these. So a color laser printer will be really nice and I'll be able to do a lot more things. Um, other things that you can do is sublimate too. Sorry, right? so you can you can use that sublimation process to transfer your images. So that's a whole different ball game and a whole different um, discussion in terms of the ink and the materials. But you definitely, if that's something you're interested in, you know, I'm sure there's information out there as well. So now I'm going to show you a couple of things that I was able to find. Yeah, if I can get it out here, so. These are some th some items that are out there. If you don't want to use the freezer paper method, you can also go out and purchase some of these and I'll kind of do them one by one just so I can see them all. So this one is made by June Taylor. This is a sew in color fast and these are fabric sheets and this one is for inkjet printers. So this one is supposed to be for inkjet printers, but again, it does have washable instructions on the back. So the chemicals that they use in terms of these fabric sheets are probably a little bit different. They probably have more chemicals in there to hopefully sustain the ink. So this is something that's out there that you could also use if you did not want to use the freezer paper method. Um, another brand that's out there, and this is by Avery. This is a DIY t-shirt transfer and this one, and you'll notice they've got two different ones. This one is specifically for light fabrics. So again, these are chemicals that they put onto these sheets of paper that you can use to transfer your images onto fabric. And then I also have this one that is by Pen and Gear and this one is for dark fabric transfers. So just note that there is a difference when you're going out to um, purchase some of these. One is for light fabrics and one is for dark fabrics. So, you know, just make note of that when you actually go to purchase them, if you want to take this route instead of doing the freezer paper method. Now I found that these are pretty pricey and I think um, they only come a couple of sheets like this one only has six sheets on here. This one has 10 and this one only has three. So you're limited in terms of how many sheets come in a pack and they're pretty pricey. So I think economically it would be better if you just tried the freezer paper method. You have a whole roll. There's a whole bunch of different uses for it. And you know, you'll pretty much get the same result as long as you follow the steps. So I think that this is a great, great project to do. Um, you can do it with your friends and kids, you know, so I, I think it's just a fun way to also transfer images onto different things, you know? So last week we looked at how you can transfer images onto wood and now we're looking at fabric. So there's just so many different, different ways that you can kind of display these memories that you have. 
So lots and lots of fun. You can also think about if you wanted to maybe put your logo onto fabric, you know, you can do that as well. So there's so many different uses for it. So trying to think out of the box and see what you can come up with and just pull it all together because I it was a lot of fun. It really wasn't that difficult to do. But you know, there are some things that you do need to look out for to make sure that you become successful on your project. So I hope you guys really like this. It, I thought it was a good, you know, a good way of me trying to figure out how I wanted to put my fabrics in. Now I do need to kind of think about how I want to position things and if I want to quilt it or maybe just make a little pillow out of this, right? So I could just take another piece of fabric as the backing. Maybe I can embroider on this as well. You can do some embroidery after you've transferred the image. That's another thing that you can do. You know, and then just sew it together and make a little pillow or a little pouch, you know, or you can just put it as part of a quilt. There's just so many different ideas out there. So let's see if I can see any questions out there. I see Annette. I have a laser printer black and white. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh, one minute tip says, so if using an inkjet has to be with pigment ink and laser is okay because the toner got it right that's correct <laughs> judy judy says oh nice nancy <laughs> that's why we love crafter noons <laughs> awesome let's see one minute tips she says but why why buy if i got tons of freezer paper yes exactly you know it, you you can go that route but like i said it's a pretty expensive route they don't give you a lot of sheets and they use a lot of chemicals on there and i'm kind of like not, not wanting to have so many chemicals around me so i think the freezer paper method works it's most economical and and you get the same results so and it really gives you a hundred square feet for this so you know you can pick these up at walmart you know any of your local stores so it's it's really easy to find okay nice it seems like you guys are really liking this process so i hope you really enjoyed it and you like our discussion today and hopefully you guys can make some projects with these if you do please share them in our facebook group or you can head over to threads where we started posting there as well so if you want to keep up with all the stuff that we're doing you know just log into the social media sites you can see stuff going on there and i'm going to continue to try to get some videos out now um now that things are kind of normalizing a little bit here and i'm hoping i can catch up on some of that stuff so thank you guys so much for tuning in today i hope you really enjoyed it and don't forget to catch some of my other videos that are out there because I think you'll enjoy some of the projects. So thanks again, everyone, and I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye.